So you have decided to go into business as a bookkeeper. And if you've done your research, you probably have come across the fact that a bookkeeping business is a low cost business. But what exactly do you need? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna go over today, what your startup cost will be as a beginning bookkeeper. And if you saw my previous video, which was just last week, it was mentioning how to register your business and the steps you need to take to be set to serve your clients. So if you haven't watched that one, check it out. And I do have a series of videos coming up where it's going to be steps that you should be taking as a new bookkeeper. A lot of us allow the fact that we don't have all these fancy gadgets or fancy programs or fancy texts in order to provider services, really all you need is a computer. There you go. I've given you the secret. All you need is a computer. Well, if it was only that easy, right? We do need a small list of items, but not as many as you might think and not as expensive as you might think. So let's go down that list and we're going to start off with exactly what I just said, which is a computer. You definitely need access to a computer. Now, this is an item that can set your budget high up or low depending on what your individual situation is. I personally started with my personal computer. As long as your computer has access to the internet, you are able to do everything from that one computer. It doesn't have to be the fanciest thing, especially if you're going to be using QuickBooks Online since QuickBooks Online is on the cloud and it doesn't take up much storage. If you have a computer already, then that's, there you go. You don't even have to spend on the computer now. If you don't have access to a reliable computer, there are so many nowadays that you can get on a budget that will do the job. And remember, we're a beginning bookkeeping business. So we are just starting off. All businesses at the beginning don't have everything squared away. And we, as we make profit, then we can start to invest a little bit more in our business. But right now, what matters is that you have your services down so that you can get clients and bring that revenue in. The second on my list is going to be a good antivirus. You know nowadays that everything runs on technology, on the internet, on the cloud, right? But with that comes a lot of vulnerability and that's why your computer does need to have a good antivirus to protect your information, but your client's information as well. So definitely invest in a good antivirus. Number three is an accounting system of your choice. If you have seen any of my previous videos, you know that there's many that can you can use. I personally use QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. It's your preference on where you want to offer your services and what you are comfortable with. And it all depends on which accounting system you're going to use on the prices that you're going to invest. QuickBooks Online is a very popular one because it offers a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor accountant account. So it's free to you as the bookkeeper and you would be able to set up your own books within this accounting system as well as manage all your clients' accounts. And again, did I mention it's free? And of course, there's other accounting systems. Wave is free. Uh, we also have QuickBooks Desktop. Now, QuickBooks Desktop has a lot of different changes going on. So you would have to do a little bit more research on QuickBooks Desktop. I preferably prefer QuickBooks Desktop, but then you also have to start looking into a remote access program, so the way to access your client's books remotely, or you can purchase the program itself. Again, a lot of changes are going on within QuickBooks Desktop. When this video comes out, there might not be access to buying the program itself as a one-time purchase. If you want to go down the route of QuickBooks Desktop, you will need to do some research. I personally use TeamViewer, but I am doing some research on Splashtop and some other programs that I might switch over to. So that is something that might change for me. But again, do your research for whatever works best for you. There are some remote access programs that are free. Number four on my list is a good work management system. If you have seen my previous videos, you have probably heard me mention Asana. Asana is the workflow management system that I use. And did you know it's also free? So Asana offers so much within their free program that you can run your full business on it. And this is something that you can hold off on. I personally learned about a work management system program a couple months into my business. 
I was struggling with the workflows that I was creating and keeping track of them, or I also was keeping everything in my mind. And we all know that that's not a very good option because we can forget steps or we can omit things from the steps that we normally take, especially if it's something that you don't do every day, maybe it's something you do quarterly or something that you do yearly. And also maybe in the future of your business, you're thinking of maybe expanding, you're bringing in employees under you. You're not always going to have the time to be there step by step and the workflows within your work management system will help a lot with bringing in a new employee. So definitely invest in a work management system. Again, this is something that can hold off, but don't wait too long because as you obtain clients and you provide your services, you'll see that it becomes very hectic and the system itself helps you so much because you don't have to keep everything in here and one less thing that you have to remember. Number five is a virtual signing program. So I personally use DocuSign. After performing your discovery call and you send in those proposals, you want to get those proposals in as soon as possible. And DocuSign makes it so much easier for me because all I have to do is send those contracts virtually. They sign it virtually and I get them right back through my email or whatever system we have created. Some clients, I provide the iDrive and they upload their documents there. But whatever works best for you, DocuSign is something that you need to look into. And it doesn't necessarily have to be DocuSign. There are many others, I've mentioned them in previous videos, that you can use, but you would have to do your research. That's one less expense that you are taking on, especially as a new business owner. And the last one on my list is Calendly. Calendly has made it so much easier to schedule appointments with clients without having to have that back and forth of maybe a certain time doesn't work or a certain date. Because within Calendly, I am able to set my times that I'm available, the days that I'm available. I send my link to my prospective clients and they are able to choose from the calendar which time works best from them. I get my alert that they have scheduled and then all I have to do is schedule my Zoom call with them and that is it. And did I mention it's free? So you see how there are so many options that you can use and with the least possible expenses. So out of this list, my only expense was a good antivirus. That was with the fact that I already had access to a computer with internet. So those are some factors that you would need to think about. But there are other things that might come up that you might, might be like, okay, well, she didn't mention the printer or anything like that. Well, again, remember, we are a virtual bookkeeping business. And if you have set up a, a system like the ones I mentioned before, like the Google Drive, then your clients are uploading everything to the Google Drive and you don't need to be printing anything out or if they need to get receipts. I've also done previous videos on how you can obtain your client's receipts through the Google Drive. The Google Drive is going to be through your business email, which is also free. You see how starting a bookkeeping business is definitely a low cost business and there was minimal expense within this list. Of course, this is after setting up your business, registering your business, license and everything. So I hope that this video was helpful. Let me be, know below what are the startup costs that you had. May, maybe I omitted something from this list. This is my personal experience on how I started my business and what I needed in order to start my bookkeeping business. So let me know below. Subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment and let me know what you thought. So I hope to see you at my next video.